Okay, here we're going to look at calculating the expected value of our 2x2 two two matrix game. So in our example, we had that the first player would choose the first and second row respectively with a probability of 0.25 and 0.75, and that the column player would choose the first column and the second column with a probability of 0.6 and 0.4 respectively. Again, we just arbitrarily chose those values. Um, our game matrix, okay, generically we can write that as A, B, C, D, and we had entries 2, negative 3, negative 3, and 4. So we, we want to calculate the expected value of this game. And again, at this point, you know, do you think, uh, you know, if you could either choose to be the row player or the column player, um, do you think it matters? And again, you know, these probabilities do affect things, so maybe that's not quite a, a fair question. But suppose you could pick any probabilities that you wanted to. Would you have any preference? Maybe that's a better a better question. Okay, so one thing to point out um, is that the row player and the column players, their plays are going to be independent because neither knows what the other one is going to do. So using that idea, so we're going to use the notion of independence and the notion of expected value to compute a probability. So if you've seen expected values and, and probability, um, we're going to use exactly that same idea. Okay, so the idea is, in this case, the probability that the uh, row player will choose the first row, we said that's 0.25. And the way we're going to abbreviate this, let me go ahead and write this too, we're going to use E for expected value, and we're going to use the uh, letters P and Q to indicate that we're using those probability matrices, uh, P and Q. Okay, so there's a probability that the first player will will pick the first row with a probability of 0.25, and a probability that the column player will choose the first column with a probability of 0.6, and the uh, the net gain in this case would be two dollars or two units for the first player, the row player. And now we're just going to continue this process. So the probability, again, of the first row being played is 0.25. The probability of the second column being played is 0.4. And again, if the first row, second column is played, it says there's going to be uh, a return, a loss of $3 for the row player. So again, we're, we're computing the expected value for the row player is what we're doing here. Okay, so the probability that the second row is picked, we said that's going to be 0.75. Again, the probability of the first column is used is 0.6. And if the second row and first column are picked, again, there's going to be a loss of $3 to the uh, row player. And last but not least, the probability of choosing the second row, again, is 0.75. The probability of choosing the second column is 0.4. And in this case, we'll have to multiply that by 4. Okay, so that's going to give us the expected value of our game here. So again, all we're doing is we're just taking each payoff, and we're multiplying it by the probability that that, that entry will be selected. And again, since those are independent, that's why we can just simply multiply the respective probabilities. You can check more generically if we label this. What we're doing is we're getting um, A times P1 times Q1 using our first entry for A. And again, we're just us using uh, the probability of the first row and the probability of the first column. So on and so forth. We'd have B times P1 times Q2 plus C times, uh, we'll have P2 and Q1. And then we'll have D times P2 and Q2. So just kind of writing uh, a more generic formula for what we computed uh, above here. And you can check my arithmetic here. I'm not going to bore you with all the individual computations. But if we simplify this, we actually end up with negative 0 0.15. So what this tells us, it says in the long run, so if these players play this game a lot, in the long run, it says that the row player, 
it says the row player will lose 15 cents per game on average. Okay, so again, they obviously can't lose 15 cents in a single game, but in the long run, they're going to lose 15 cents per game on average. Okay, so, you know, if they played 10 times or if they played 100 times, if they played 100 times, the first player could expect to be down somewhere around $15. Okay, so that's the idea. So it turns out that uh, using these probabilities, you would want to be the column player because then you're obviously winning a little bit of money. Okay, so I guess the big question is here, I mean, obviously, again, you can choose different probabilities, right? You could, you know, uh, you don't have to use 0.25 and 0.75, and you don't have to use 0.6 and 0.4. So the big question is, is there an optimal way to change these probabilities, right? So ideally, the first player, the row player, wants a strategy to give the largest expected value because then they're winning as much money as possible. And the interesting thing is they want this strategy to work irrespective of how uh, the, the column player picks their strategy or their probabilities, which is interesting because we really don't have to to care at all what the column player does. Likewise, the column player wants a strategy that would give the row player the smallest expected value. Well, because if it's small, it, that means the column player is either paying uh, the, the smallest amount possible, or likewise, if it's negative, it says they're actually uh, you know, getting as much money as possible on average. So they want the strategy that would give R the smallest expected value irrespective of R's choice of strategies. So it's interesting. Um, you know, basically it says they're both trying to win as much money as possible, no matter what the other person does. So in the next video, we're actually going to start discussing how to go about doing that because, again, the magic thing is there's, there's, uh, there's actually ways to do this. So uh, take a look at that, and we'll actually do some more computations, and we'll actually start looking at computing the expected value of our, of, uh, uh, of our, our game that we had a second ago. Okay, so we'll actually look at computing the expected value of this game using the optimal strategies. And again, we'll talk about how to find that optimal strategy.